Achieving Lower Network Latency A Explainer. What is latency? Latency is a time delay. It is the time it takes for your packets to get to another location and for the response to get back to you. Here's how latency is experienced. You send a request to your cloud service, and then you experience a hesitation before you get a response. Or you make a VoIP phone call and notice that you can't both talk at the same time. If you try to carry on a normal conversation, both parties talk over each other. You have to take turns, like you would on a walkie-talkie. A critical need for low latency is high-frequency financial trading. In this field, even a few milliseconds of delay can affect the profit or loss on a trade. What is it that causes latency? Distance between locations, or between your location and the server that you are using, is one source of latency. That includes the complete path of copper wireline, fiber optic cabling, and satellite links. Another source is network congestion. You'll experience this on the internet during particularly busy periods. Congestion is especially bad on shared bandwidth services, such as DSL and cable. If others are sharing your line and are downloading HD videos, you may experience slow web access and distorted or dropped VoIP phone calls. Will simply increasing bandwidth solve the problem? Maybe, maybe not. Depends on what's causing the latency. If your network is congested to the point that packets must be queued in a buffer before they are forwarded, then more bandwidth can clear that blockage. This is most effective if you can control the quality of service so that latency-sensitive applications get the highest priority. If the problem is path distance, however, no amount of bandwidth will make a difference. Path length is critical to low latency operation because the fastest that packets can go from source to destination is limited by the speed of light. That is 186,000 miles per second or 186 miles per millisecond. That means that if your signals must travel 1,860 miles, it will take 10 milliseconds at the absolute least for them to get there. Light moves slower through glass fiber cables than it does in a vacuum, so you may only get two-thirds as far per millisecond. Satellites are a special case. Most of the distance up to a satellite and back is in a vacuum, so it might seem that latency would be less. With geosynchronous satellites, the type that stay in one position in the sky, that path length is over 22,000 miles up and another 22,000 miles back down. That creates a latency of at least a quarter second one way, or a half second round trip. So much latency will certainly make two-way voice and video conversations awkward and make cloud access annoying at the least. You'll get the least latency on terrestrial fiber connections that are engineered for the shortest path between source and destination. Conversions between optical and electrical signals along the way must be minimized as they also add short time delays. Such circuits are available for demanding applications such as high-speed trading between major financial centers. Most applications can get by with normal fiber routes and MPLS networks. It's best to avoid shared bandwidth, public internet, and satellite circuits if latency is an issue for your needs. Are you interested in finding the optimum connectivity that meets the bandwidth, latency, jitter, and packet loss required for your business applications at the best price? Please call 888-848-8749 for expert consultation and rapid price quotes from multiple carriers serving your locations. You may also submit your requirements at telexplainer.net.